today's show, Facing Fears, Dying to Dreams, but Living Powerfully. Twin brothers David and Jason Benham have achieved great success and continue to live out their dreams, God's way. Their journey began on the baseball field, but it quickly turned to business as they retired and moved to North Carolina. Although they had no formal business training, they were armed with a core set of life principles that paved the way to their success. Even in the midst of their reputation and business being slandered, remaining faithful has taken David and Jason further than they ever thought possible, a journey they recount in their book, Whatever the Cost. Jason and David enjoy life with their respective families in Charlotte, North Carolina. Please welcome entrepreneurs, the Benham Brothers. Hey, Jason and David, good to see you guys. How, How you doing, doing, man? Good to see you. You said good Jason and David. You mean David and Jason, yeah. right? <laughs> we got to tell them the story. I walked into the green room this morning when I met you guys for the first time, and I thought, I'm not going to know who's who, but it's 50-50. That's right. So I just walked up to the first guy and said, Jason, he goes, How'd you know? <laughs> yeah, that was really You're good. You're the first one that's ever done that. <laughs> you know, when we saw you, we saw your shoes with your red laces. Come on, man. That's... I mean, I, I, just, I hate my shoes. I want to switch with you before the show is over. <laughs> but it's great to have you guys here today. And uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about the story because you guys, uh, your story raised. And so let's just dive into it. And uh, you can fight over who's going to start and where we're going to do what. I'll, I'll let him start because whatever he messes up, I can fix. He can mop it up for there me. There you go. <laughs> you know, we were raised in a Christian home in Dallas, Texas, and uh, our dad was a pastor, and he didn't train us to be professional athletes or entrepreneurs or anything. He, he taught us one thing. He said, boys, you need to be biblical thinkers. So we both gave our hearts to Christ when we were 12 years old. I like to say I led the way and then finally led him to the Lord, but that's not, that's not true. <laughs> I was at a youth camp, and he was in a little chapel service in junior high in, in Texas. And then we uh, graduated high school in 94, went to college, Liberty University awesome. in 98, and we graduated from Liberty. And then we went and played professional baseball. I got drafted by the Red Sox. He was with the Orioles. and then uh, Which was the better team? I had, I, we were minor <laughs> leaguers. Of course me. That was my natural, my natural response is me. No, I, I voluntarily got out of the game, but he, he got kicked out of the game because he couldn't hit a curveball. <laughs> no, that's the problem. <laughs> Please don't laugh at that. <laughs> you know, our dad taught us that if your theology is not your biography, wow. then your theology is moot. And so we, we learned at a very young age that church, if church was something was a place that you go and testimony is something that you give, then attendance is paramount. But if church is something that you are and testimony is something that you live, then being salt and light is paramount. We learned that at a young age. And uh, when we got tapped on the shoulder with HGTV, we got a chance to show the world what that kind of looked like. And we give God all the praise for the that. H that's home and garden. That's right. Yeah. They they kind of saw your story. What 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 did they see? Were you guys on TV or were you, well, you were making it? Well, what had happened was we after we got out of baseball, we started a real estate company, uh, and and during that period of time, we took I took a job as a janitor. I mean, we had young families. I've got yeah. five kids. He only has four, so still I'm constantly time. ahead. Still There's time. still time. I might let him have but, that uh, one. <laughs> so we started a real estate company, and uh, that company exploded to 100 offices in 35 states. Mm. And um, we tell people, we just applied the principles of the Bible yeah. to the marketplace. That's it. And God blessed it. And uh, HGTV took note of our real estate success. They also took note, we're, we're CrossFitters. We love to exercise. I know he doesn't quite look like it, but <laughs> we, um, uh, they took note of that. And, and they said, uh, they reached out to us after TLC made us an offer. So TLC made us an offer first. first. It was a production company that came and said, hey guys, you want to be on reality TV? And we thought there was a catch, but there wasn't. So they took a little three minute sizzle clip of us in Charlotte with our families. We live on the same street. They took it to Los Angeles to a pitch fest and five networks wanted us. First offer we got was with TLC. And then HG came in and said, is it true that you guys are in real estate? And we said, yeah. And they said, is it true that you guys have nine kids between the two of you? We said, yeah. They said, is it true that you compete with each other at CrossFit and you live on the same street? And we said, yeah. And they were like, we're going to make you an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> so it was really exciting times. So they made you the offer. Did you start shooting some of the pilot in the shows? They're, they actually made us an offer, six one-hour episodes with no pilot oh, at all. Wow. It was interesting thing is before uh, we actually signed with HGTV. They vetted us 
and in the vetting process, they found out about our Christian faith and, and our beliefs. And They knew who you oh, were. Oh, they knew oh, exactly yeah. who we were. And you know what? The same thing that we tell everybody, the same thing that got us fired is what got us hired. It was our Christian yeah. faith manifesting itself in the way that we lived. <laughs> and so that's what attracted them to us. And uh, of course, it's also the same thing that got us fired. So in Canada, I think a lot of Canadians might not have heard the story. So tell us what okay. happened with H. Home you want to do it? Or you got it? I'll, t I'll take it. Let him do it. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. That way it makes sense and it kind of all goes together. <laughs> but um, so, so HGTV found, they knew we were pro-life. They knew that we were pro-marriage guys. They knew we were biblical Christians. No problem. And we had sold 23,000 houses in 12 years. And we, we never took a sexual litmus test or anything like that. No. Uh, you know, when we're selling houses. So... Uh, then when w they started airing some commercials in the spring of last year, as a matter of fact, last year at this time, we were still filming the show. We got five weeks into filming. Endorsers were starting to call in. Commercials were running. They announced our name at the upfronts in New York City. And when they did, uh, that was a really good thing for us because a lot of the advertisers were excited about it. Because our families being on the TV and stuff were very competitive. It was fun. A lot of, sure. a lot of good television. Yeah. But uh, there were some activist groups uh, that reached out and said, listen, these guys are haters. Now, of course, that's not true, but that's the narrative, unfortunately, that's been developed in America. If you stand on biblical principle, you're called a hater. Now, of course, we should never be hateful with the way that we never. speak or anything like that, no. which we weren't. Um, Jesus wasn't. No, right. Exactly. And so, um, and, and so this narrative that had been developed by these activist groups, uh, they started putting pressure on HGTV. So HG called us and said, guys, we're getting pressure from some of these groups. And we just want you to know, we're going to stick with you. You're going to be stars on our network. That was their exact words. And we write about it in our book. And we didn't know that five weeks in, that those groups were going to get so militant and so forceful with HGTV, like on their Facebook page and phone calls and emails, that HG called us and said, guys, we just can't handle this. So, so these groups mounted a campaign. And they came at you a lot through social media. That's right, social media. And then there was a specific article that was released by a, a group that basically painted a picture of my brother and I simply because we believe according to the Bible on lots of things according to marriage, when life begins, and those types of things. And they basically just put it out there to the world to say that we hate women. They spun it their way. Yeah, that we hate what all things. What was good for them. Yeah, they, right. you know, text out of context is pretext. So yeah. they would take our comments and they would even say things they actually even said that we stood in front of a mosque with a bible screaming god hates muslims that is a lie we've never done anything like that <laughs> no christian should ever do something yeah. like that that's just not I true agree. but so they took this story and spun it and really created a narrative that made jason and i look really bad and and hg didn't believe it but hg couldn't handle the pressure because now they were getting pressure from everywhere and and once we got fired we got fired on facebook it was interesting. He's used to getting dumped. I've never been dumped <laughs> True. before a day in my Not life. True. But, but anyway, so we get, we get fired. It, and within hours, I mean, all the major news networks in America were calling us. And, and it became the number one Facebook story. And 51 million tweets were delivered in America. A sixth of America was talking about this story for a short period of time. It was very interesting. And, and God just gave us the opportunity to stand right on his word and say, listen, we don't hate anybody. Jesus loves all people, but He does not love all ideas. He does not love all behaviors. Thank God He saved wretches like me and a bigger wretch like Him. <laughs> and so we just took that message to the masses in America. You know, in my life and in many of the men and women that I interview who have strong standards of faith in Christ, it's kind of like the verse that says, many are the plans of a man's heart, but it's the one from God that stands. Right. And I'm always planning, forecasting, preparing, strategizing, meeting with teams and whatever. You know, we run about four organizations. And, but it's amazing how God interrupts all those plans and He does it quicker, faster, better, bigger, or by that I mean with greater impact for the kingdom. That's right. And, uh, and that's what this sounds like. And we can't, in the middle of it all, we can't tell that God is directing our steps. Sometimes it looks like chaos, or sometimes <laughs> it looks like a roadblock <laughs> yeah, or true. a dead end. Yep. It, when you get up above into the clouds looking down and looking back from God's perspective, you're like, wow, that was genius. But that's <laughs> also why we can't, true. that's also why we can't focus on the plans of God. Yeah. We have to focus on the person of God. That is and we so even said at the good. Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, we don't seek to live purpose-driven lives we seek to live person-driven lives and let God handle our purpose.
Say that one more time before we go for a break. We don't seek to live purpose-driven lives. We seek to live person-driven lives That's and then to let the God of purpose lead us into that. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to keep unpacking that because that is so true. We'll be right back with Jason and David. True wisdom is the man or the woman who knows God's boundaries and is surrendered to living inside of them. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. The more study and thought you give to what you hear, the more impact it has on your autopilot. This is why it's so important to carefully choose who you allow to speak into your life. Don't let just anyone speak into your life. Think carefully about the people you bring into your inner circle. Do they speak mistrust, suspicion, and negativity into you? Your heart takes in what it is exposed to, so you need to guard your heart. You also need to be careful about what you're watching on television or in movies because of the way it affects your heart. I love a good movie, but there are some I just won't watch because the pictures they paint in my mind aren't ones I want to meditate on. The words others speak and the media you are exposed to have a great impact on your heart, but your own thoughts are just as powerful. You can choose to keep your thoughts positive and uplifting. When you get up in the morning, for example, focus on something positive right away. You don't have to put up with a bad mood or a negative trait of thought. God's most incredible creation was His kids. He made you in His likeness and His image, and you have so much more potential than you realize. Keep out the bad, flood in the good, and live life the way God designed you to live. Welcome back. My guests today are David and Jason Ben. We wrote this book, Whatever the Cost, Facing Your Fears, Dying to Your Dreams, and Living Powerfully. You know, in the green room and here as we're talking, it sounds like you guys have created your own standards from the Word. You refuse to compromise, and it has not hurt you. Well, you know, a lot of us like to talk about the blessings of God, but not necessarily so much about the boundaries of God. But when we realize that God's blessings are only found within His boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so we committed to reading through the Scripture when we were 12 years old and have still been doing that. Now we're 39. And uh, we've learned a lot about the blessings of God and His boundaries. Even in the physical world, if you don't live according to His boundaries, you're going to pay for it. Yeah. You don't believe in gravity? Well, go step off of a building and you'll discover you should have lived within that boundary. And yes. God has that set up for all of us, and it's our job to figure out what those boundaries are. And true wisdom is the man or the woman who knows God's boundaries and is surrendered to living inside of them. He can't top that. Uh, you know, that. that was actually profound. He can't I, top I, that. I, I don't, no, I'm not normally speechless when he's sitting here. But uh, yeah, I mean, we have, our, our dad used to tell us when we were kids, like we opened the segment with, your theology must become your biography. And so we know as reading through the scriptures and as living out this life that, that our faith in Christ is not just a private faith that's relegated to a Sunday morning service, but it's a comprehensive worldview that affects every area of life. It actually is the, it's the foundation of life. It's the, it provides a framework for our marriage, for our children, for our business, for the way we vote, for economics, I mean, and everything. And, and the more that we begin to apply those principles to life, the more relevant we become to the culture because they all need answers and we have them. 
You know, we have a term that we use at our church and the television station called spirit contemporary. And it means spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, not no compromise, but contemporary means relevant, cool, not condescending, domineering, manipulative. Because religion, I use the word religion negatively, can feel like if we can bash and force, but that doesn't sound like where you guys are at. When you're doing business, if you've built, uh, you know, companies the size you have, and you're not nailing every person you talk to about their sin and judging them and sitting them down yeah. and preaching at them over lunch. You're just living it, walking in love, and every opportunity that God gives you, you're taking it. Am, am I saying that right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let, let, me, let me say this. And, and two, you're exactly right. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Yeah. And here's the beautiful thing is that when you're in relationship with someone that you love, and specifically God Himself, then your focus is never on relevance. Your focus is on reverence. And when you focus on reverence, then relevance becomes a byproduct. Very cool. If we focus on relevance, then oftentimes what happens is we do the same thing Abraham did, where his mind got on the plan of God and not on the person of God. And then, of course, we're still paying for that today yep. with the sons of Ishmael. But now we look at Abraham with, when he had Isaac, the son of the promise, God said, go sacrifice him. At that point, he had already made it right, and now he was focused on the person of God and not his plans for him. Therefore, he was able to follow God even though he didn't quite understand where he was going. Very That's true. reverence. Yeah. And uh, when we live reverently to God, we'll be just like Noah, who built an ark preparing for rain, even though nobody knew what rain was at that time. He was the most irrelevant man on the planet for 110 years. <laughs> yeah. But the first drop of rain, he became the most relevant man on the planet because of his reverence. Very good. My dad used to say, this way, he'd say, there's force and there's power. Mm -hmm. The power of God is upon you. He's within you. He's around you. You don't need to force your life. Make room for your gift. Try to make it happen. Just be. That's awesome. And there's nothing that's going to stop you from fulfilling His call. You're, you're exactly right. And when you talk about a spirit contemporary, uh, we're called to be light, right? Yeah. Salt and light. And, and light does a couple of things. It exposes two types of things. In Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Good works, not your judgment. And they may, that's right. That they may glorify your Father in heaven. But then light also exposes evil deeds. So all we have to do is just shine the light. I mean, and, and just speak, and, and God will handle all of the rest. Uh, I love a quote by one of our founding fathers. He said, When it comes to principle stand like a rock, but when it comes to style, swim with the current. So Jason and I are swimming with the current of style. I mean, I'm not near as stylish well, as you, but I'm, oh, I'm talking on. about that's, the styles of culture. That's how you can rock a, a blue pair of wingtips. <laughs> I'm impressed with that. But you stand resolute on principle, yeah. and that's where people really uh, experience the power of God in their lives, is when they see that principle. And you may not see the results of it right now, but in heaven we'll see. We, we actually have you know, in Joshua, in Joshua, the book of Joshua, it says that when the last of Joshua's generation died, the next generation knew not God or His mighty works. And it's pretty sad that they were probably the most powerful group of mighty men. Moses couldn't take them through. Joshua and those men fought, believed, marched, but the next generation knew not God. The issues you guys are talking about and helping business people, families, men, women, help them to stand up. We want them to love God, be light, be salt, but on the, for every mile of truth, there's two miles of ditch. That's good. So on the one side, we got people who are trying to be so relevant, they're cool with no power. That's right. That's good. But on the other side, I'm tired of the judgmental, yeah. mean-spirited Christians who are bashing in every direction, which is kind of a spinoff of probably why it happened to you with some, all the stuff that does go on in front of them. You know, we were on the Glenn Beck show, and he asked us, well, how do you balance truth and love? And we said, you don't balance it because truth is a man. <laughs> and love is a man too, and yeah. his name is Jesus Christ. And our one role as Christians is to lift up the name of Jesus. Yeah. And that means some are going to love you, and some are going to hate you. Yeah. It's not because of the way that you acted, it's because of the substance of what's in them. The same boiling water that hardens the egg softens the carrot. Our culture tends to want to turn the temperature of the water down, when in reality it's the substance of what's in the water. That is so good. I know years ago, as a young pastor, when things were just started exploding and I'm trying hard to please everybody, 
you know, and I was failing miserably at it. Like a chicken with his head chopped off, running around. One day I just started saying, God, there's just no way I can get these people to like me. You sound like my brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a whiner? No, I don't like that. Hey, we're in this together, you and me. And you know, in my heart, I just heard this. If, if I couldn't do it, the Son of God couldn't do it. Wow. You ain't going to be able to. So you don't. You're so right. Live the way God's called you to live. Follow Jesus. And there's going to be some that are going to hate you, some that are going to love you. But one of the things I love about listening to you guys' stories, I, I interview a lot of successful people people. But if they don't have the standards, the, the person of Jesus, they're only successful in one area. And we don't talk about all the other areas they don't want in the interview. But I want it all. I want a marriage. I want kids. I want generations. Sure. I want to prosper. I want to be happy. I want the peace of God. I want great friends. That's I good. want purpose. I can have my cake and eat it too if I follow Jesus. Amen. That's right. Very well said. And, and I would say, and I was talking with one of the guys back in the green room um, about success. And I said, the problem is, is that we oftentimes don't stop and define what success is. Ooh, that's good. We need to be on God's page with success, because if you read Hebrews 11, a lot of people lost their lives. We'd say that they weren't successful. But I'm, I'm with you. If we're following God's principles, then we can have our cake and eat it too. Yeah. It may cost us our lives, yeah. but that's As God. the Kendrick brothers, who are friends of ours that are movie producers in America, they say, uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't play fair. He favors his kids. So we can have it all. We can have our cake and eat it too. This issue, it's so true. You know, when you love much, you do sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Because love is so like, if you, when you're married, like you love your spouse, your wife so much that sacrificial love is powerful. Because it's not 50-50, I'll love you 50, you love me 50. It's 100 nothing. And that's how we serve God. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, like I said earlier, love, love is a man. And, and, what the, the, the thing is, and we wrote about this in our book, what does love look like? Well, as a father, if I'm in a camp and all of a sudden a wolf comes into the camp, what does love look like at that moment? Do I let him take my kids? Not at all. I stand strong. I stand boldly. But as a father, I'm also gentle and loving and kind with that fatherly spirit. That's what Jesus modeled for us. And, uh, and I think you model it as well. And the scripture says, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Yeah. There, there's a... Uh, it's, it's compelling to live a Christian life when other people are watching you and they realize, you know what? This person is willing to take the heat. This person's willing to take the hit and to look like an idiot because he's loving enough to tell me the truth and to speak it in love. And uh, I, I'm just telling you, we're, I believe we're on the verge of a great awakening and a oh, revival. Yeah, yeah, I really do too. And, and I would say this just real quick, just 15 seconds. Perception is not reality. Truth is reality. If we focus on how we're perceived, we're going to miss the truth. Yeah. So we can't focus on how the world perceives us. We need to focus on just living and being the truth. And that's how we're going to have a great awakening in Canada and in America, and excuse me, in the United States. Amen. You know, when I hear you guys talk, I'm also hearing this, that as business people, as believers, there will be people who will not like you. You're not going to be able to win them over per se, but they can't stop what God's called you to the success, the future. Don't be afraid. Because a lot of us, we gulp when we see confrontation. People begin to rise up against us. They begin to blog about us, lie about us, do stuff about us. You, the fear begins to rise up. Do not be afraid. You know, God's made our foreheads like that prophet stronger than theirs. Get up and just go live it. It's we awesome. say you have to have a hard head and a soft heart. When you said God made the prophet, you're talking about Ezekiel. He made Ezekiel's head hard. But the Lord constantly talks about, do not harden your hearts. Right. So our hearts remain soft, but our heads remain hard. And the way, that, the, way that that looks, <laughs> the way that that looks practically is that you resist ideas that stand against the knowledge of God, but you reach out to the people who hold those ideas. Yes. That's a hard head and a soft heart. That is so true. Very well spoken. Thank you guys for being with us today. Hey, it was this great. has been awesome. I love your pocket square. <laughs> <laughs> and I get your shoes in the green We'll wheel and deal right after this show. It's like, <laughs> I want to encourage you to get this book by David and Jason called Whatever the Cost. And I want to encourage you, don't be afraid of criticism. Don't be afraid of people rising up against you. If you're following Christ and you stick true to what He teaches and what His principles are, it might cost you something, but it'll never cost you your destiny, your future. Because what God thinks about where you're going is far superior to every plan you've got. It's exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think, Ephesians says. We'll be right back.
Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this Spirit Contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. What a great interview today with the Benham brothers. You know, it reminds you of the story in the Bible of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing up for what they believed and for their faith. And that brings me to the passion that we have for Spirit Contemporary, that we need to see the gospel. We need to see our churches. We need to see our families come alive with the power of Christ. We call it being Spirit contemporary, that we want to be spiritually alive. We can be so cool and so relevant that there's no power in it. And then some people, they've got the power of God and the Word of God, and nobody wants to listen to them. We've got a generation who are hungry to have strong standards and morals and to stand for something. But this message has got to get out there to them. I want to send you this book, Whatever the Cost. Could you send a gift for $35? And it's going to help touch a nation. You're going to touch a young man who's thinking of walking away from the church. It's going to make a difference in North America, in the English-speaking world, to say our churches need to rise up. The Church of God needs to know who they are. Don't just think, well, I can't give anything. God's touching your heart. And for $35 or whatever more God puts on your heart, because some could do way greater than that, we would love to send you this book as a gift and say thank you. Go to your phones right now, and why don't you make a difference? We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on Islamic television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, a young husband and wife who let God weave their love story together and show them what true love was. Life is a journey and I think every moment, single or non-single, God wants you to learn something. Yeah. So I think a lot of people want to blow past the single part, but when you're single, God makes you that man or that woman you need to be for that spouse.